What's up, guys? And thanks for watching our Holiday Cartridge Talks series. We are excited to bring you our first ever limited edition Vortex Nation podcast hoodie. If you're watching on YouTube, it's the one I'm wearing right now. Now, we only made 99 of these things. So when they're gone, they are gone. Click the link in the description to get yours. Thanks again, and enjoy the show. Happy holidays, everybody, and welcome back to our Holiday Cartridge Talk series. Gentlemen, we have a cartridge here today before us that we're going to talk about that's been um, requested very often, mm -hmm. many, 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 many times. A cartridge that at one time we had slated for episode 300. Oh, yeah, that's right. Did, uh, I, did I just give it away? Yeah, we goofed that one up. What happened? Well, so there's a tie-in though. We had a video that a different video that we needed to launch. Alders to Alpine, a Kodiak Blacktail Bonanza. I suggest you watch it. It was excellent. You can watch it on our YouTube channel if you haven't. Good if watch. you have, watch it again. I don't know. I liked it. I was there. Probably have a uh, personal affinity bias for it. In that video though, Ryan, here's the tie-in. It's a loose tie-in. The cartridge I hunted with. Yep. Can't believe I touched the stuff. A 300 Winchester Magnum. Was that a backup gun or something? What's wrong? What happened? We just wanted to use a different rifle. Oh, okay. Uh, it was actually it was a Nosler rifle, and this was the Nosler ammo that I put in it, uh, shooting a 180 grain Nosler Acubond, one of my favorite bullets. I do like the Acubond. Um, and here's the, the recovered bullet right here. So there. That's pretty special. There's your loose tie-in. But, uh, Ryan, this is, uh, this is a cartridge of the 60s. Like many of the cartridges we've been talking about. Yeah, we didn't on... plan that thematically. Like no. it just It just happened that way. Yeah. And it really led me to believe. I'm like, whoa, were the 60s like a magic era Dude, of there cartridge was a lot development? of this stuff going on in the 60s. Oh, that's <laughs> well, a, I know that. That's a definitive heck yeah. Oh, I, mean, I mean, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the 60s. But there was also just seemingly a lot of innovative, like rapid Innovation was, in the 60s. Was it just a, like uh, like technology, industry, kind of like hitting like a, a magic moment where, wow, we can really do these things right now? Or was it just an interest in shooting because of uh, a period of time? I think that and mind-altering drugs, Mark. Okay. That's a loose tie-in, but I support that theory too. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, you know, that's a great question. You know, we're, we're off of the Great War by a couple of, couple of years and whole bunch of cool stuff. Industry, like you said, um, material sciences psh, ramped up. Maybe it was just that, that period between 1938 and 1947 you know, was the dark ages, so to speak. And so innovation was halted, perhaps. Like bigger fish to fry? Correct, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, but there was, well, there was a lot that happened in there. There was. Out of pure necessity. I mean, in fact. And a lot of it was like, how do we turn this toaster into a gun? Yes. How do we turn <laughs> this sewing machine the, into a gun? The only thing I could think of right there was an M3A1 grease gun. Uh, yeah. I knew, I, how do we turn this car muffler yeah. into a gun? My my grandfather was in uh, Korea, and he's not a wasn't a gun guy. This is my father's father. And he asked me, he's like, I had a gun when I was in Korea. He goes, I don't really know how to describe it. And I'm thinking, okay, well, he had, a, he had an M1 Grand or something. And he's like, you know, it was small. And he goes, this pretty lightweight, fired a big bullet. I'm thinking, what? And he goes, you know what it looked like? He goes, it kind of looked like a grease gun. <laughs> and I'm like, that was an M3A1 grease gun. You just named it by yeah, name. <laughs> correct. Yes. And he's like, that sounds familiar. And I was like, that's pretty cool. Like, he had an M3A1 grease gun, um, which was the, to the toaster turned into a firearm. That's super neat. Um, that was wild. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, out of the 60s, uh, we produced a, a lot of really, really good rounds for hunting, mm -hmm. rounds for competition, uh, rounds for personal defense, firearms. Like, it was, a, it was a great period of firearms innovation, 50s and 60s. 1963 to be exact. In fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Could you or would you say this was uh, Winchester's answer to the seven millimeter rem mag? Yes. Yeah. It was late. They they should have 
they should have been on the ball with this earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, they weren't. I, I, don't, I, I don't know why. I'm not a Winchester buff. But <clears throat> a cartridge like this had existed for a long time. 1925, we saw Holland's Super 30, uh, or the 300 H&H Magnum. Okay. Which was uh, kind of apparent to this cartridge. Very long, slender case that resembles the Washington Monument with a belt on the bottom. The 300 H&H. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a full-length cartridge, um, so it would fill up the entirety of a full-length action, right? Um, 30 caliber, 180 grain bullet, you know, 150 to 250 feet per second faster than the OT-6. Uh, okay. Speed Demon, right? So we're north of three with that projectile. Um, great round. A beautiful cartridge. Still is today. And this, I always looked at the 300 Win Mag is like the modernization of cartridge design for the time. And we took the super successful uh, 300 H and H, and we gave it a new profile, new mm-hmm. shape, smaller case, a little more efficient, fit it into a different action length. Um, and we get Magnum Performance, the 300 Winchester Magnum, arguably one of the most successful cartridges of our time. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, yeah. it it sits. With, uh, I'd say, very, uh, what's the word? It's like, not good company, but like, it sits at the top with just a like, handful yeah. of cartridges. I that are, yeah, I usually think of like ubiquitous cartridges in America, at least, and it's like 223, 308, 30 out 6, 300 Win Mag. Yep. Yeah. Amongst, amongst probably a couple of others, a handful right. of others, but yep. like, it's it's in there. It's a short list. Of Every one you listed there was were the ones I was thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's a, a fantastic Versatile cartridge. Uh, factory offerings, you know, you can get into the 150 grain stuff and be totally adequate for whitetail or pronghorn and mule deer and factory stuff up to the mid two or well, low twos, 200, mm-hmm. 200 to 210 grain stuff, 212 uh, from our friends over at Hornady. And wildly successful cartridge. It kind of does everything. It's on the top end of excessive for some things. Like it's arguably overgun for whitetails and pronghorn but as mark likes to say you can never kill something too dead mm. well and you know if you're looking for like a do-all killing yes. stick that's that's a good one you're gonna contend its versatility is yes i would say nearly unmatched you're gonna contend with a fair amount of recoil because it's a yes. 180 grain projectile into the 3,000 foot per second territory and and over that line uh, and so it's a it's a spicy meatball yeah, uh, but golly, can you do anything with it? I mean, Mark, it's got mag in the name, so you kind of expect it. Uh, the lump of coal next to this is a recovered 180 grain Acubon, correct? Correct. From yep. a, uh, a Sitka blacktail that you had killed. Mm-hmm. And that was a mostly frontal shot, right? Yep. Hard quartering two. I think I hit him, you know, probably point of the shoulder. Yep. Found that projectile actually in my house when I was doing final processing. Of yep. it. I was like, "Oh, what's this little treasure?" Uh, in the uh, it's a man, tum- right, it's in, a right in the uh, right in like the that ball socket joint of mm. the uh, you know, I guess you know that quarter or, or off back ham, and uh, it was cool. We weighed that the other day, Ryan. Yeah. So, and I, I also of note, shot that deer at like sixty. Yep. To 80 yards, yep. somewhere in there. Very close shot. So he took Woof. he took all of it. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think it was like 130, a 130 uh, grain recovered projectile. Um, fantastic mushroom, I would say. Um, deer dropping. I mean, dude. I it imagine was it was like an accordion. Yeah, that's what he I just, picture as He just well. collapsed. Yep. It, was, it was done. I yeah. picture like a brief black hole. So let let's say, (laughs) (laughs) let's say Mark, you had gone up there with a little bit more time on your hands, and let's say you wanted to hunt. Can you hunt black bear in the fall up there? So yeah, in a different region. Okay, but yeah. So Mm -hmm. let's let's say you went on the Alaskan safari and you decided you were going to hunt moose, caribou, blacktail, black bear, brown brown bear, bear. doll sheep. That's the full complement. Sure. What what a trip! I know it. That would that would be the one gun you'd have to bring. Mm. That's it. Yep, it's very true. And and you'd be able to contend with a long range target just as well as you'd be able to contend with a short range one, mm-hmm. as evident. Um, ammunition availability is exceptional. Mm-hmm. It's a cartridge that's been around longer than most of us combined. Uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, 
I mean, it, it, it's versatility from a hunting perspective or even just really just a cartridge perspective is, is tough to beat. It's seen uh, military and law enforcement use. Absolutely. bring that up, yeah. Absolutely. And that bodes well for its popularity, right? So this, Always. when the 762 by 51 millimeter NATO cartridge, a.k.a. 308 Winchester, on the commercial side of things, um, was the gold standard of sniping, mm-hmm. a, a void was left unfilled, and that was what happened between that cartridge and 50 BMG, and effectively the solution, right? Um, this is extending terminal window on in that application by a considerable over the distance. 308? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, does so handily. Um, really qu- quite a wonderful round. And we, I can't believe we've done three belted magnums so far. Right. The belt is just starting to look like a normal bringing, thing. To we're me. bringing I'm the just, belt I'm gonna back. Start, I'm going to start thinking it's weird when I see cartridges without them. I know it. Um, Ryan, you know, one of the things we brought up, like when we talked about the uh, <clears throat> 350 Remington Magnum, uh, we talked about the oddball gun that it was released in, you know, with the 600 series. I'm curious, like, we don't often talk about this with with other cartridges, you know, unless it unless it's, like, a point to be made. But, like, with this one, any idea, like, what the initial gun was that this would have come out in? Winchester Model 70. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I was thinking. The figuring. Rifleman's Rifle. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, I mean, it, that that is, I mean, plug and play. You've got something that so many people already are looking for. Yep. So. And then adoption th- throughout the world yeah. in Turnbolt rifles, right? I, I, yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I, I would challenge you yeah. to find a rifle manufacturer that doesn't chamber a rifle in 300 Win Mag. The yeah. freaking Browning BLR comes in a 300 Win Mag. Absolutely. It's the biggest thing it comes in. That's fun. It's a, And it's a great cartridge. I have one. Uh, it's great round, great rifle. My father told me he's going to go elk hunting. And I said, all right, well, my dad's not much of a gun guy. I thought, well, I kind of probably owe him for the sins of my youth, so to speak. So I was going to get him. <laughs> Ryan, like, you can't continue to carry this guilt with you. The the full compliment he of... Doesn't, he doesn't control you anymore. Well, well you'd be surprised. <laughs> he called me last night to tell me where I need to be to go cut up trees. So <laughs> uh, From 342 miles. Uh, anyway, I saw... I, I was, uh, we're talking about guns, and I said, well, what does everybody in your hunting party have? And I was expecting it to hear a whole bunch of seven rem mags because his... his Buddies are those kind of guys. They fit the bill. Yeah. <laughs> and it was... <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more Do needs I... to be said. Okay. It's... I'm not going to ask any questions. Yeah. There's a little shade for my 7 millimeter rem mag friends there. Um, <laughs> and and he said, 300 win mag. He goes, Do you have one? And I thought, perfect opportunity for an early <laughs> birthday present. And so I, I, I called up uh, some friends of mine that are rifle builders, and I commissioned a, a 300 Winchester Magnum. And great rifle. Um, I really should use that thing more. I don't know why I don't. So, That's just one other one sitting in your safe, huh? Yeah. And uh, threw a two and a half to 10 on it. And uh, shooting the 190 grain factory Barnes LRX ammunition, which is mm. going mm-hmm. into the mid 29s. And it is a pl- plenty to hold on to. It's on the threshold of why did I do this? Uh, famously accurate rifle. Uh, just absolute powerhouse and uh the the idea here is he wanted to have ammo compatibility with his buddies if need be Mm. um fun little story about that my father's probably up until that point never shot further than 120 yards in his life and so i called another friend of mine this is back home i said hey can i borrow your range he's got 600 yards steel out to his place and uh, he's like yeah sure whatever you know so we go out there and i bring a 6.5 creedmoor and i bring a this 300 wood mag and we're setting up the steel or excuse me he already had the seal set up and you can see it way off there and i'm like all right we're gonna we're gonna shoot the distance and he's like you can't shoot a gun 600 yards like <laughs> you idiot what are you doing and so i get him going with the six five he's bing 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 you know he was not shooting great and then he was shooting really good we'd go down and take a couple pictures next to targets because he was proud i said all right let's give that 300 winnie a spin and he gets on, he pulls the trigger, hits the steel, kind of like resets himself. And he's like, can you kill an elk with a 6 5 <laughs> <laughs> And uh, my dad's a pretty pretty big dude. And, and, uh, and I said, yeah, you can, but you're not going to. You're going to shoot this thing. And I think he brought it over to his buddy's house, and they took turns shooting it, and then they just put it away. He never killed an elk with it. Oh, no. 
Did they go? They did. Yeah, okay, they, they did go. They, they okay. did kill an elk. They they killed an elk. There's a fun backpack story with that too. Um, he basically took a Jansport school bag with oh, him. No, I, after I That's gave perfect. him a beautiful mystery ranch terraplane, which he said was far too big for this, and they packed out an elk in a, <laughs> in a, in a school bag with no frame. Let's see, I um, got my my uh, notebook, my pencils, yep. and my my yep. elk. Yeah. Uh, okay. But that's that's the cartridge and what it was made for. It was made for big servants, big critters like that. You know, I remember the one that I shot though that I owned br- for a brief period of time. It had a it had a muzzle brake on it. And it was actually not, it was a very comfortable gun. It was not too bad at all. I think it had a it had a longer barrel on it. I remember. Yep. I don't know if it was twenty four or twenty six, but it had a muzzle brake on the end, and I didn't no. mind it. It wasn't any worse in that case than a three hundred eight. No. I never shot it without the muzzle brake on, to be frank, but. Um, the gun that Mark took to Alaska, there was three of a kind there. Um, they were equipped with muzzle brakes. Mm-hmm. They were a very flyweight rifle. Uh, you know, they were just over seven pounds, I think, unladen. I didn't break mine. I think I put a muzzle brake on yours. Mm-mm. I had it off. Did you take it off prior to the event? Something like that. So I didn't want it braked. And then, anyway, well, didn't you'll, you have, to, it, you'll right? have to watch the story. Okay. But I ended, up, I, asked... I ended up shooting Eric's rifle, which he did have the brake yeah. on. So I did... The rifle I killed the deer with was braked. Can I ask why? <clears throat> why what? You don't want it braked? Just because I, I knew that likely something would happen. Now, I ended up shooting with hearing protection in, but I knew that likely things happen fast, and then I never get my hearing protection in, so I didn't want to have an unbraked rifle. Or I didn't want to have a braked rifle. Mm. And it didn't bother me that much to shoot it. Mark does handle recoil very well, which we I know this. I attribute to, to his dad's strength. Um <laughs> We know this to be Thank true you. because he's yeah. had for how long with those uh, you yeah. know, not not heavy three hundred wisdoms. Now here's what I'd say though: every time I shoot a six five creator or a three hundred eight, I go, "Why don't I do this more often?" Yeah, yep. what a breath of fresh air! Because he likes the power, baby. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> it makes him feel That's alive. That's what it is. Uh, wow, we kind of we ventured around here. I want to say this about the cartridge. So it's it's an old round, right? It's it's getting it's getting up there. Okay, it's sixty, uh, and Golly. Uh, and it's still there's you got to look hard and long to find a a reason not to run a 300 Winchester Magnum in in yep. today's day and age if especially if you're like a western hunter right or you have any kind of distance to contend with um it, it despite it being 60 years old i do not believe it has slowed down appreciably there's, at all. there's so much stuff now that will do the same job and you can argue the more efficient thing and all that but like Here's one of the things that I think about. Yeah. If you reload, then I could see how efficiency would be a thing that you think about because you're the one having to pay for the powder to stuff in the case yep. and if you can use less of it and achieve the same, whatever. But if you're buying factory ammunition, oftentimes these new and more, um, uh, I guess for, at least for now, obscure cartridges that are more efficient, if you buy factory, are actually more expensive. Yep. There's so that. So in that case, it's like, who cares if it's more efficient? Yep. It's still less expensive to buy the factory stuff of a very much uh, proven 300 Win Mag. Mm-hmm. So whatever, right? I mean, I, I don't know. That's how. Yeah, it it stands tall yet to this day, and mm-hmm. and, and really not, not much is going to blow it over because it is such a good round. Mm-hmm. Um, again, on the excessive side of things for many things, but better to have. Than and not need than to need and not have, I suppose. Sure. Um, and it it will do kind of anything you want it to. And with the amount of like Jim had said, you can get the like federal blue box ammunition, like the inexpensive stuff, mm-hmm. all the way on up to stuff like the the trophy grade and super and premium. Yeah. Pick your species. There's a bullet to do it in this mm-hmm. loading mm-hmm. Uh, for certain, or in this chambering for certain. And here's one I don't think is going anywhere anytime no. soon. I mean, like we talked about, the, the 7 Rim Meg, a little bit earlier birthday, took a minute for this thing to uh, kind of catch on, but then eclipsed. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, since then, we have the 300 WSM, which, again, I have personal affinity for. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, 300 Rum, 300 Rim and Ultra Meg, yep. 30 Nosler, yep. 300 PRC, yep. all cartridges... I really like none of them as popular as the three hundred win man. Often often uh copied, I would argue, never usurped. Yeah. Yeah. And heck as somebody who owned and fawned over a three hundred Weatherby still own it. 
I'd download it to get it to 300 win peg performance to be controllable. <laughs> I was like, it was that gun was insane. Still is insane. Um, I feel like that gun scarred you for life. It's 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 I f- it gets brought up in like every podcast. Oh yeah, man. Right. Yeah. It's the benchmark of ridiculousness for me. Like, mm. what was I thinking? For what you were doing with it, could be needed for somebody else who Look, might the seventeen need that year extra old gas. Oh, the seventeen year old version of me convinced himself that that was the only solution. I remember there being an opportunity for a three hundred win mag and saying not enough. And so I ordered a six and three quarter pound, three hundred Weatherby without a muzzle brake. Oh, now, did someone God. make that from the That's factory, the- or did you create that? Uh, so it's a fun story. It was a gun that didn't exist. That inquiring with the manufacturer whether or not I could get X Y Z configuration to this. They're like, yeah, we can do that through the custom shop. Got it. So and you you created that monster, sort of. I mean, it was a brainchild of yours. Yeah, I mean, it was like a, the manufacturer was like, "Yeah, we would never sell this." Do you think they were like, just, "Yeah, we can make that for you"? Ugh. I'm sure they'd done it before. They put him on hold for a second. They're like, "Hey, John, <laughs> check out what this guy wants." You want to? You want to beat up this kid? Because <laughs> yeah. we have an opportunity. You know, the funny part about it is that the first hunt that I fielded it on, um, I ended up killing a pronghorn. So they're all of a hundred pounds at eighty-seven yards. <laughs> 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 at eighty-seven yards. Uh, uh, so a hundred pound critter that I, I could have killed probably with a wrist rocket, um, at 87 <laughs> yards. Want to see a pronghorn explode? <laughs> I shot it in the neck. Um, it was funny. I, I could have taken this in a wrist rocket and, and killed it. Uh, but anyway, it's a, it's a, it's a great round. I'm proud to own one. I, I always know like, you know, you, you go through the rigmarole of like, oh crap, what do I use on this hunt? That thing is always in the back of my mind. It's like, well, it's just ready to rock. Yeah. You're a 300 win man. Oh, yeah. And then ne- never take it. Let me ask you this, Ryan. Yeah. This is kind of like a, a one gun for the rest of your life question. Mm-hmm. But somebody says, okay, Ryan, open up the safe. You can keep one for big game. You know it's going to be something old. and No, it wouldn't. No. So th- you don't think so? No. You don't think it's his 45, 70, nope. high No way. Well. He's too practical. Yeah. There's there's three in that lineup, and I, I struggle with this. Because every time I get a new gun and a new chambering, like I'm all excited and then it. and then yes. I get home and then you, I'm like sitting in the dark wondering what I've done again. Why Ryan, why do you do this? You've been there. Like, it's a vicious cycle. It is. I, I sit there and I'm just like, You gotta stop, man. You need to get help. <laughs> <laughs> and oh then another voice says, No, it's okay. You need more. <laughs> That's us. Yeah. And so these three rifles um are three oh eight, a thirty out six and a three hundred wind mag. Yeah. And fair enough. And where where I become conflicted is I know the 308 is enough for anything I'd ever do and how I do things. The 300 Win Meg on the on the opposite side of that um, that yardstick there is like, yes, the 308 can do everything. This can do it better for all these reasons. That's your what if well, gun. Well, I was going to say, and that handles the what ifs. Yeah. yeah. It, it, oh, well, then, it's a great shot. It is a little bit longer than I normally take it, but it, I mean, it's so clean. They're standing broadside, standing still in the open. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, <laughs> the demons almost just came out. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it it solves a lot of problems, but it does so again at at an increase of recoil cost, uh, a loss of controllability, um, and, and what I found myself gravitating towards these days personally is more and more and more control of my my firearm and firing solution right? and and i agree and you and you have those tools at your disposal yeah. so it's like you know pick the right tool for yep. the job yep uh but if you were to do something maybe a little outside the scope of your general you know pronghorn hunt or mule deer hunt yeah you've got yeah, the right tool for the job on this hunt that's what might normally go on but yeah then you reach for it yeah i don't hunt elks or anything but if i did yet be one you want to do it with? Oh yeah, it'd be good. I got enough points for, for a couple. I think it's in the near future. Good. There's a high likelihood that that gun comes. I hunt, I hadn't hunted elk in a couple of years, and I did this year. Yeah. And uh, got lucky enough to get one. Yeah. Which is absolutely amazing. Uh, I credit the person I was hunting with, Remy Warren, 
on. Is he good at that? Yeah. Like, mm. if I didn't get one, I was going to, like, probably quit elk hunting, actually. I don't know. Because I'd be like, it's, it's just not in the cards I said me. that. I said that in it's jest. I was jk and If he hears that, I, I hope he doesn't. Oh, he would that. know. He's okay. one of the best elk hunters alive. Yeah. He, uh, he knows what he's doing. So, yeah, I credit him. But uh, got to get one. Which yep. is which is cool. It was fun, super fun hunt. I mean, yeah, just watching him uh, do his uh, do his craft in his element, yep. and just the way it like it was it was really you know cool. what fun I'll, hunt. I'm gonna make myself a personal promise. I'm gonna hunt my 300 win mag next year. Well, you heard it here, folks. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. I like it. Maybe for elk. Maybe. We'll see what uh, we'll see what the tag gods provide me. Yeah, no, I'm facing. A bison hunt. We checked one new one. Well, then you could use that. Fall. No, you can't do that. Like, you can't. That's illegal. It's not. It's, it's, to- not it's totally illegal. It would be like totally a fantastic choice for that. That will be a 4570. There's no question about it. That's a nostalgia thing. What did I tell you? But, but. I'm, I. He's practical but plagued by his own nostalgia. Yeah. I will have probably one or more mule deer tags in the pocket. I may have an elk tag in the pocket. Um, may have a Western bear tag in the pocket, depending. Uh, and that, that I will make that promise here today. Jeez, dude, that's a going out year. That's a year to die year. I haven't had that since 2018. I haven't had a real, I, I hadn't had a real slammer since 2018. That was one of my best hunting years. Yep. Too. I, I did bear starting in September. Uh, then it was pronghorn then, or it was 2019. So bear pronghorn, two mule deer hunts. Uh, and then picked, filled up the cracks and gaps with a f- couple of whitetails. Shot quite a few grouse that year. I think I shot a couple of turkeys too. A two hundred and some pounds of venison that following year. That's amazing. That yeah, was good. That was, was the year. I think I did Alaska like kind of twice. I can't remember like you know how the season. I did spring and the fall. So I did. Uh, I think I did a uh, a moose hunt, which was just amazing. Oh. I can't wait to. I would. I, I remember that. Love to do that again. Uh, do you remember what you said one? when you got back from the moose hunt? Ah, oh, they're such large mammals. I said, I don't think I need to do that again. <laughs> and then three months later, I was like, I'll I ne- need I need to do I'll that I'll never again. forget Mark just coming back. <sighs> <laughs> Blowing his bangs, you know, like they do in the infomercials <laughs> when everything is all black and white and they're dealing with all these pots and pans. That was my... <sighs> and we had, dude, we had like relatively very easy pack outs and I was like I don't know about those things <laughs> easy easy pack out is put into perspective very differently when the hind quarter weighs 125 pounds yeah when when the nostril is as big as a softball yeah you realize the scale of those things is very different than most things yeah. you yeah. chase but uh, what an awesome card then, uh, doing I think it. I did a I think I got a black bear that year um, I shot that moose with one of these uh, 300 wind meg brothers that was the 300 ultra meg yeah um, nominally better from a performance standpoint but yeah that was a good year 2018 <laughs> right on let's do that again 300 winchester magnum old but not slow no nope it is uh still a fantastic viable incredibly popular option so there you have it folks happy holidays finally i can't believe it you know what you save you save the best for maybe not last but we've done a lot of these cartridge talks and it's taken us a while to get to the 300 win mag because there's a better solution. I'm not going to name names 300 wisdom. Um, you know, hold on a minute. Yeah. I don't even know if I mean that. Just so you know, we needed a heavy gun for the range certification program. Do you know what was selected? 300 wind mag. That's correct. Yep. It's, it's fantastic. Mm. All right. I'll finish the close. <sighs> I shouldn't have even said that. No, I don't know why. Enough. Why did I? Why did I stick that in there? Because you're a man of slight. Oh, terrible. Uh, all right, everybody. Hopefully, you enjoyed that. I did. I love the 300 Win Mag. I do. It's a fantastic cartridge. I bet a lot of you guys out there have one or more of oh, these things. That's one thing we know for sure. Could be the family cartridge where everybody in the family has one. Yep. Uh, let us know. Hopefully, you enjoyed this. Did we miss anything? Let us know that as well. The good old 300 win mag, tough to beat, good for everything. Happy holidays. We'll catch you on the next one. See you. Bye.